say some. Chopper come out of the box like a motherfucking ray gun. Think you a beast, but you ain't one. You are not on the same page as a kid, you just page one. They had no luck, I had to make some. When I get rich, drop a Tesla on day one. What color Tesla I want? The red one. What kind of red he want? The Shanks one. My niggas know I got drive. Driven that wheel. I swear a nigga got callous. My team ain't losing, don't know why you challenging. Chopper go like it's Valorant. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, we're back for some more Death Note. Last time we watched episode 11. Today we'll be watching episode 12 now. In the last video, we went ahead and had a very interesting conflict between L and the police department and so-called Light, aka Kira, basically tormenting uh, different news studios and uh, news anchors and other various television personalities for no apparent reason other than to prove his dominating force of power using the death known in the shinigami ryuk and um overall it just didn't seem to me that it really aligned with his uh philosophies and ideals that he's been sporting for the past 11 episodes or 10 episodes or whatever so you could color me confused as to why he would do such a thing out of the blue even though l it seemed as though he's you know gaining on his tail and i guess he wanted to show some type of superiority over l or just wanted to make an even bigger step than he had in order to uncover his true identity um not to mention that he was able to use this brand new ability that had been mentioned before but i was you know kind of confused as to why he'd want to use that because he didn't express any interest in wanting this specific ability and of course that ability being the shinigami eyes which would allow him to see the name of any person that he looks at which would in turn make it very easy for him to kill them just by writing that name in the death note but it's at the cost of taking half of his lifespan and of course he wants to sport his kira godly persona for as long as possible and cutting it in half basically ruins that whole entire plan <laughs> but um, regardless, it seemed as though he had been, you know, demonstrating all these different attributes that had completely, you know, went out of character for him. So I was pretty confused until the end of the episode, of course, where it was revealed that it is none other than a completely different person with a completely different death note and a completely different Shinigami. I was able to do all this and had, in fact, had the Shinigami eyes. So... Needless to say that this is a very powerful individual that's able to kill anybody that they can get their eyes on. And on top of that, they are a Kira Stan who have no idea who this individual is, but seems to be completely devout in following their ideologies and are just doing this for a little shout out, a little attention, essentially just the, you know, desperate clawing at clout so that Kira can get uh, some type of... I don't know, uh, admiration for their devotion to the cause, but clearly Light is, or at least I don't think Light is going to be impressed with this show of um, desperate, I guess, clout chasing for some reason. Um, you know, it was far too jumbled and far too obvious of a, you know, show for some type of power that it was clear that light didn't have anything to do with it but that was you know my main confusion but it did wrap up pretty nicely to you know reveal that it was in fact somebody else doing all this um so then the question stands what exactly is light going to do about this new revelation and how exactly this individual is going to fit into the overall kira plan if they're going to be a third party antagonist if they're going to help out uh light a or kira aka light um and how exactly L is going to react to all this? Because it was clear that L knew exactly who this individual was. Or not who they were, but the fact that it wasn't Kira themselves doing this. Because this was far too out of character. And, you know, it's a pretty common thing in criminology, I'd imagine. To, you know, uh, I guess, analyze the psychology of whatever criminal you're up against. And trying to, I guess, you know, break down how exactly they might act. And... When they do things out of character, it's going to be clear to you that this is not this individual, this specific criminal doing that, but someone completely different. So, criminology 101, I guess, is something L is trying to uh, demonstrate here. But he's just like, this is out of character for him. He's not. This doesn't follow any of the motivations that he's, you know, demonstrated for the past couple of weeks or months or however long Kira has been doing this. So, 
L was able to, you know, conclude that this was somebody different. And that is an even more terrifying revelation than it just being Kira acting out of character. Because now you have a completely different person able to sport these godly powers that you couldn't even figure out the first time with Kira. And now you have a whole other person and it's just going to cause a whole bunch of conflict. But we'll have to see how this can all, you know, I, I, I admit this is making the story far more interesting as far as you know what the possibilities could be and you know the they, they had already been you know very very clever in the way that you know l and lights were sort of having these mental games of chess and it was really fun to see you know what the new move that each individual person would make not just l and light but you know the other players at hand the detectives and um other people related to the detectives of course we had naomi and all that who came in after the death of her fiance so it's like it's really fun or not fun i guess but <laughs> fun is a weird word to be put in this terribly dark series but um it's intriguing to see what exactly everybody's you know next move is going to be and now this is a huge wrench to throw into this whole you know story that they've crafted so it's going to be really uh i was going to say fun again but i actually you know what her being included in this might be fun because she seems like a pretty eccentric character to say the least so we'll have to see how this goes down uh if you guys like to watch full reaction links are always in the description um early reactions also in the description you know the drill but let's get into it here episode 12 of death note let go yep So L is not completely. Yep, there you go. Fake Kira. Yeah, L isn't really convinced that light isn't Kira just yet. Ryuzaki. I wonder if those are fake names. Clearly, L's is a fake name. He's not going to give anyone his real name. <laughs> yep, they had that video that the fake Kira sent. So regardless if they believe if he's Kira or not, they're going to want to use him to find the second one. <laughs> they just want to see how you deduce this entire situation. Yeah, choose your words carefully about this one. He is looking very carefully to see how he goes. Yep. <laughs> there it is. And <laughs> it's not very bright. <laughs> Ooh, he might use that to actually meet up with this fake Kira. Ooh. Hold on. Yeah, be the real Kira real quick. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at Ryuk laughing, bro. <laughs> He wants to see how you think when pretending to be Kira, even though you really are Kira, so he could prove that you really are Kira. Ooh, boy. What'd you write up? This is a little too good. <laughs> I 
now the tension lies in whether or not we get to see this fake Kira find out who L is and see their face or see his face because that's going to be interesting. I wonder what they get. Damn, <laughs> I was expecting her to be a bit smarter. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's saying all that. Wow, that's some pretty crazy info to drop. Right. No. The eyes. Damn, L, bro, you got some crazy info right here. <gasps> no. <laughs> And this person's an idiot. <laughs> Look at L. <laughs> wow. L just nutted from the crazy information. He said this plan worked so much better <laughs> than I thought. Damn. Oh, this show turned the fuck up, bro. <laughs> No, wait, hold on. I need to read the rules. <laughs> you might also write the cause in more details of death prior to filling in the name of the individual. Be sure to insert the name in front of the written cause of death. You have about 19 days, according to the human calendar, in order to fill in a name. Wow. Okay. Wait, so most of the cause of death to prior to the name. Oh, okay. So if you want someone to die a certain way, but you don't know exactly who it is, you can write it down that certain way first. And then... You can write in a name within about 19 days. Okay. Even if you do not actually possess the death note, the effect will be the same. If you can recognize the person and his or her name to place in the blank. Hmm. Wow. This really turned up right there. Whoever this second Kira or this fake Kira is or whatever, the second death note user, <laughs> they really are just a fan then I, how did wow okay because they have no idea how to this is crazy actually mm -hmm. oh shit it, dude. What the fuck? Why? Uh oh. Yeah, alright. <laughs> I just happened to be around when he did die. Oh, she's gonna tell her? It's to make the... What type of mental torment is that? How do you make someone do that? Jealous? <laughs> you can't kill me. <laughs> I'm just here to give you your your property. But I, I don't know if that information is going to be important to him. I don't really think he has. Well, I don't know. For his ideals, I don't really know if the weakness of a Shinigami is going to help him out. They will probably be <laughs> if you take too long. Are they meeting? No way. They just so happen to be in the same cafe. That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> or maybe she went there on purpose. Or no, it's just coincidence. There is no way this is just coincidence, bro. 
Wouldn't the Shinigami see them though? Or Ryuk and Rem? Or maybe Ryuk is going to tell him later and just fuck with him. <laughs> you actually did run across him. I didn't tell you because fuck it, bro. This is funny to me. <laughs> that is, this is a great episode. What the fuck? Two crazy revelations made. Um, now I do have a couple of questions because I did say that there is a lot of things swimming in my mind towards the middle part here. Um, also, it's so hilarious how both light and l overestimated how cunning the second kira might be aka misa because i guess they didn't expect such a like well fangirl basically to come and come across such a powerful tool like the death note and be able to do these things because they completely overestimated just how clever she would be about this second message that she would make but she gave out way more information than they would have originally thought um, now I do understand L's, I guess, you know, his completely over the top reaction to this information, because not only are you dealing with a very, very surreal situation with somebody that's able to kill around the globe without any real, you know, connections or, um, or any feasible, you know, manner of making it to these different or locations and being able to kill these people somehow not only that but they're dying of these in um inconspicuous ways of heart attacks or you know getting into car crashes and falling off rooftops and all this shit so it's like you're dealing with a very 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 strange case that could almost be supernatural but you don't really have every proof of these things being supernatural in the first place to even hurt the case even more you have this video evidence of people dying out of nowhere so not only is it by you know uh by like uh, reports of people just having these heart attacks and dying but also you're seeing it clearly happen with it like you're seeing it happen so it's kind of hard to um justify this as anything other than supernatural so you know regardless of how realistic you might want to present this as the people here within you know um the police department or l's little division here of uh detectives are trying their best to explain away everything that happens here as being somewhat realistic in a way or they you know they don't want to resort to the supernatural but then as soon as you hear something like shinigami between a so-called conversation of the two people that are performing these acts you know it's kind of hard to not actually think that there is some type of supernatural um you know interference that's going on here so it's frightening to say the least but like not only does that make it so that like you know the existence of these things actually become true but also how do you fight that as just normal people? Because now you're dealing with things outside of the realm of uh, human possibility. Now you're dealing with gods and demons and all this other crazy shit that, you know, makes it even harder. But I don't know, considering the type of person L is, maybe he'll consider this as even more of a challenge. It's like, oh, now I get to fight gods and demons. Okay, I'm out for it, bro. <laughs> Bring it on. Um, but yeah, Misa let out way too much information there. I cannot believe she said all that. Um, it's believable for someone of her, you know, I guess excitement or, you know, her current position because she seems to be purely just a fan. And, um, you know, it's it's unrealistic to assume that everybody is going to have the same cunning as a police detective or L or Light because L and Light are basically top of the top, right? They are like, regardless of how you look at it, whether it's bad or good. They're the optimal people to be in this situation because of their, you know, uh, deductive skills and uh, reasonings and all that. So it's kind of just really impressive to see them work in this current situation because they are at the top of that specific di division of being able to think. But then if you give these things to a regular person, then you have Misa who's just spilling all the beans without really thinking about what they're going to say, which is hilarious to throw that because now because now you're, you're you have something that's unpredictable in a bad way like normally whenever light or kira does something unpredictable it's in a well thought out fashion but now you have misu who's just acting purely out of i guess uh, uh some type of um you know just like a fan would act it's just like purely out of emotion or it's purely out of amazement or i guess some type of 
um, like just somehow she's, I don't know. I, I don't know how she's going to follow up with all this. Maybe she might do something clever later on. Um, I guess there is a bit of cleverness in her, um, you know, wanting to find out something important that Light doesn't know, like how to kill a Shinigami so that she has some type of leverage when she actually does meet Kira because maybe she does realize that Kira is a very complex individual with this godly status so she wants to have something to offer up for whoever they are if they ever do meet so that she's like hey look i can be of some type of use i do have this information here so we'll have to see how she plays it because that's pretty important information in a way but still i don't really think that's something that light is going to be interested in um because then who are the shinigami that we know other than ryuk and rem right so who, wh why would he need to kill unless other shinigami come in and then that information does become pertinent to him but as of right now i don't really see how that's going to be helpful to him in any way so we'll have to see how they play around with all this because this is a lot of information to add here as far as um really making everything seem more complicated in a way now i also do want to talk about this dude jealous um because rem stated that a shinigami needs to fall in love in order for them to die so I was thinking at first that it was more so the Shinigami falling in love made it so that they would perform actions that they normally shouldn't because their primary goal is to take life, not to give life. So him sort of interfering with the natural way of things, as horrible as it may be, um, the natural order of things was that so that Misa would die in this specific um, altercation here of her just walking in the street and getting uh, assaulted by this person but him interfering is what essentially broke the rules and then killed him so i was like how does love play a part in that um because he did the he did that because he was in love with her sure but it wasn't because he was in love with her right like if he was in love with her and didn't interfere then he'd be fine because sure he did that because he was in love with her but it wasn't that wasn't the thing that you know he, he stayed in, he was already in love with her right so why didn't he die as soon as he fell in love with her it was because he interfered with her dying that i think was the main reason why he you know had to that that was why he died because he interfered but they also stated here that it was a combination of the two so need to fall in love with the human and save that person so I don't know so they can save a person and not be in love with them and still not i don't know maybe it has to be a common maybe have, they have to be in love and save the person which is very specific and very tough to do <laughs> i'd imagine i don't know that's a pretty twisted way to kill something or anything or whatever but um yeah it was a bit confusing me at first i guess because it was just like like both of those things can exist on their own and they won't die like they can be in love and not save them and be fine or they can save them and not be in love and not die because I'd imagine them saving them is the main thing that would break the rules. Uh, but maybe it has to be both. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to see how they play around with that information. But that does it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode just as much as I did. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.